I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on combinatorics. We're discussing Pascal's triangle and one of the most interesting pattern which has been recently discovered. Still, many patterns are being discovered from this age old Pascal's triangle, right? So, it is called the star of the David theorem. The star of the David theorem is discovered by Mr. Henry W. Gloud in 1972. Yes, after almost 300 years of Pascal's triangle being in existence. We'll look into this pattern and explore a rule for the same. So the pattern basically tells you that the numbers placed in star position as shown has some same product, right? That is the pattern. So in the Pascal's triangle, you can see here, some numbers are placed around in a circular form, but they form two stars. One I've shown with the numbers colored in blue and a star triangle. The other one, the numbers colored in green. Now that also forms a triangle. So these two triangles, when overlap, gives you a look of the star. And that's how we just position them like a star. Now, interesting part here is that the product of ones in the green is same as the product of ones in the blue. So, if you put these numbers at the corners of the star, in that case, the three in one triangle product is same as the product of the other three in the other triangle. What I'm trying to say here is, that as you can see, the number 35 is right in the center. Around that, we have 20, 15, 21, 56, 70, and 35. Now, if I multiply the numbers in green, which are 20, 21, and 70, what do I get? 20, 21, and 71 multiplied gives me 29, 400. On the other hand, if I multiply these numbers, which are 35, 15, and 56, I get the same product. So the product is same for the numbers which are positioned in the star-like quality. Do you see that part? So let's take a simple example. So for example, if I take the numbers which are, let us say, somewhere around 3. So, okay, around 6. So let's say if I take this number 3 and then alternate it with these three numbers. Okay, so the numbers highlighted are 3 times 4 times 10. So we'll do 3 times 4 times 10. And what do we get? 120, right? So that is what you get. Now, let me highlight the other set of numbers which form this triangle. And this is in blue. 3, 10, and 4. Well, this time the numbers are also same. So obviously, you get the same product. Well, so that is one way of doing it anyway. Well, you could have a different position where the numbers are not same. So let's not take another position. Let's take the numbers around 6. So which are 1, 15, and 7. So let me multiply these numbers, which are 1, 15, and 7, right? And we'll get some product. 7 times 5 is 35, and 7 times 1 is 7, and then 3. 105. Now, let's look into the other set, which is for us 5, 21, and 1. So again, 5 times 21 this time, we'll multiply and see what do we get. Okay, so we have 5 times 21 times 1. That gives you 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 times 2 is 10. So we again get the same product. Do you see that? Now, these are positioned in kind of a star. Do you see that? So, you can also just form a triangle like this for one set of numbers and another triangle for the other set of numbers. And this makes a look of a star perfect. And you can see that in these corners of these triangles, the three numbers in one triangle, their product is same as the product of the other three. 
So that is very interesting. Correct. You can explore and check for yourself many other patterns in this, but this is extremely, extremely beautiful. Now, exercise for you is to identify each term number and place them so that you can write a formula and that is what we have to do here. So let's uh, further explore this. So what I've done here is I've again picked up the same set of numbers and now the exercise for you is that we have these two triangles right there, the blue triangle, correct, signifying these blue numbers and the green triangle signifying the position of those green numbers, right? We know the numbers and we have seen already that their product is exactly same. But now, can you give me the position of these in the triangle? That is what we are looking into. What I'm trying to say here is that the number in the center, which is 35, the location is what? Well, we are looking into this particular row, which is the seventh row, right? So it gives you 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 7, 4, correct? That is the center location. Now the number, which is 20 in the green triangle, is actually on the sixth row. So it is 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is 6, 3. So likewise, you can fill this up. And here we have the next number, which is 6, 4, right? And on the left side of 7, 4, we expect 7, 3. And on the right side, it has to be 7, 5. And below, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is the green one. So which is 8, 4. And definitely, 8, 5 is the position of the other one. You can write these numbers also in Pascal's terms, where we can write T7, 4 right in the center and all of the numbers around it. Perfect. Now, if I have to write the product statement, then I know that 7, C3, right? I mean, six C4 and eight C5. You can say eight choose five is actually equal to the ones in the green, which is six C3, 7 C5, 7 choose 5, 8 C4, 8 choose 4, correct? So their product we have seen is exactly same, perfect. Now, based on this, we just looked into the position. Can you give a general formula? So pause the video at this stage and try to write down a general formula relating these terms. And now, so that it could be in the terms of N and R, so that you can generally find the position of these star studded elements. Okay, so here once again, what we have done here is instead of writing 6, I'm writing 7 minus 1. The whole idea here is that 7 minus 1 can relate with the center number, which is 7, 4. So I've related every number with the position in the center. Do you see that? 7, C, 4. So with 7C4, I'm trying to relate and get to the formula. If I say 7 is any number, that is to say, if we're talking about something like n choose r, in that case, what could be the formula? And where do we find these six numbers, right? Three in each triangle. Well, from here, we can say it could be n minus 1, 4. 4 is r for us, correct? So let me write r. So that becomes a general rule times, now this is just n and this is r minus 1 and then we have n plus 1 and this is r plus 1 and that should be equal to n minus 1, r minus 1 times n, r plus 1 times n plus 1, r. Do you see that? So there is a pattern in this also. If you look at it, then see r, r minus 1, r plus 1, and n minus 1, n, n plus 1. It goes in a sequence, correct? n minus 1, n, n plus 1 goes in a sequence, left to right. And then the numbers r, r minus 1, r plus 1, and this rotates. And you can now see r minus 1, r plus 1, r. 
So in a cyclic order it rotates. Do you see that part? And that helps you to remember. So what I'm trying to say here is that this beautiful pattern can be generalized into the formula which I have written here for your convenience. So you can have a good look at it. Try to see how beautifully we have pictured the whole thing and how easy it is from here to understand which star elements are actually related in the star of David theorem. I hope that really helps. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. You can always write to me on my email address to reach me or to learn from me. Thanks for your time and all the best.